Okay, so welcome back to sportsciencetutor.com and in this tutorial we're looking at how to choose a dissertation topic and in this respect the most important question that needs to be asked is what makes a good dissertation topic and this can be answered or summarized with three words in my opinion originality, context and competence. With respect to originality Really, you're hoping to provide a positive contribution to the existing knowledge base in your field. And that can only really be achieved if there's a level of originality to your research question. With respect to context, you need to be able to relate your findings to the existing research literature in your field of interest. And in terms of competence, you need to be realistic with your methodology and you need to reach you, well, you may need to reach a level of compromise between originality context and what you will actually be capable of achieving uh, when performing your research. So if we look at originality, we can achieve this goal in one of three ways. Firstly, we can aim for a specific outcome that's, no, that's not been achieved before. So an example here might be when Watson and Crick were looking to unearth the structure of DNA, but maybe on a more realistic level for undergraduate dissertations, we might be interested in achieving original research through these second two points. So we might be looking to identify a particular problem or question that's not been asked before in a particular topic. So an example here relevant to sports science would be molecular exercise physiology which is a rapidly growing area of sports science and in particular a lot of research is looking at how particular molecules are being activated and what extent they're being activated in relation to different exercise protocols. Um, for example mTORC1 or mammalian target of rapamycin 1 is a particular molecule that's been extensively investigated into strength training adaptations and people have looked at the optimal training protocols to maximize the activation of that molecule. Uh, but there's various different molecules that are being researched for various different reasons and it may well be that there's a lot of research into a particular molecule and how we might go about maximizing the activation of that molecule but no one's really asked the question of whether or not activating that molecule to a large extent on a frequent basis is actually the optimal means of achieving the training adaptations that we desire. And in that instance, if you could go about answering that question of whether or not it is optimal to focus on protocols that will maximize the activation of that molecule, then you'll be able to add to the existing knowledge base in a very specified topic area. Alternatively, the final point looks at applying a new methodology to an already widely subject. So an example here may, might relate to power output because there's a lot of research that's been performed over the years in relation to the optimal loads to use in different strength training exercises is in order to maximize power output in those exercises. And findings can often vary widely. So we might have findings ranging from 30% of one rep max being optimal um, for maximum power output in a certain exercise and other researchers might vary in their findings with uh, suggestions of loads as high as 80% or 90% being optimal for the maximization of power output. And the reason why we might have such a big range of different findings is because different methodologies are being used in order to determine power output in those exercises. And so if you're interested in an area where there is a lot of conflicting research, then it may well be that you look to expand upon the research that's been performed in that area by applying a new methodology to that already widely stub studied subject area and that would be a new, another way of adding to the existing knowledge base in an original manner. With respect to context there's there's really two reasons why we need to have a 
thorough appreciation of the research that has gone before us. First of all, it underpins originality in as much as if we're really familiar with the research, then we can be sure that no one else has actually um, already performed the research question that we're looking to investigate. And secondly, we can actually use from previously used method, we can learn from previously used methodologies. And that relates to the final point on the previous slide, whereby we might be interested in applying new methodologies to an already widely subject studied subject matter. Um, and if we can learn from previously used methodologies, then perhaps we can improve on those methodologies. Um, and also, we need to have a good appreciation of the research literature that's gone before so that we can provide a strong justification for the research that we're performing. Why is the research question that we're interested in important? Why is it important to answer that research question? It's important to be able to provide that strong justification. Equally important, if not more important, is competence. If we can't perform our research investigation in a competent manner, then it's of no use to anyone. And there's two considerations that we need to bear in mind here, resources and skills. In terms of resources, if you require a database of information in order to conduct your research, are you going to have access to that? Alternatively, if you require specialised equipment, in order to perform your research, do you have access to that equipment? And that kind of relates to skills as well. Do you have the skill base in order to use that equipment in a reliable and valid manner? If not, then you might want to modify your research question in some form or other. And finally, subjects. And this is probably one of the biggest stumbling blocks in undergraduate and postgraduate dissertations. Are you actually going to have access to uh, a suitable uh, pool of subjects and that relates to the number of subjects that will be available to you and also the type of subjects that will be available to you. For example, it's often exciting to perform research on elite athletes but oftentimes elite athletes don't want to be part of um, these studies because it might interfere with their training. So that's a factor that really needs to be considered. Hopefully that's given you some insight into how you can go about choosing a suitable dissertation topic. But if you need more help in this area, then please check out sportsciencetutor.com and you may be interested in Mentor, which you can learn about on the website.